Hello and uh, welcome to a brand new episode of uh, The Daily Debate. My name is Ahmed Nader and today as we are approaching the end of uh, 20, 2020, the year uh, of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, we will be having more about the achievements that happened here in Egypt in the field of um, education in general and higher education in specific under the tenure of uh, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi and the will of the political leadership to be um, having a development, a progress every year in this field and in this sector as the year 2019 was declared before by President Assisi as the year of education here in Egypt. We will be um, discussing uh, the latest achievements be given by uh, the world in Egypt and according to the uh, latest um, research from the US and the rankings from all around the world about the uh, Egyptian universities, about the uh, higher education here in Egypt and about the uh, quality of education in general and how it improved under the tenure of President Abdel Fattah Hassisi in general in the past six or seven years. And we'll be starting uh, the episode for tonight with a top story and it comes from the presidential activities of President Abdel Fattah Hassisi uh, regarding a decent life or Haya Karima as uh, the top story says that there was a meeting between President Abdel Fattah Hassisi and uh, tweets made by the President on the social media. President Abdel Fattah Hassisi held a meeting with Prime Minister Mustafa Mabouli and the Minister of Housing Asim Al Ghazar to review the progress reports of the ongoing projects of the new cities and villages. During the meeting, President Assisi directed to expand the first phase of a decent life initiative for developing the Egyptian villages to reach 1,500 city centers in several governorates at a cost of 500 billion pounds. The president also instructed to establish 250,000 housing units within the state strategy through the national mega project of a house for every citizen. Meanwhile, the head of state was briefed on the latest developments of at Tagalli al Adam over the land of peace in St. Catherine and uh, Mount Moses in Sinai Peninsula. As we can see right now on the screen, uh, the tweets made by President Abdel Fattah Hassisi on the social media regarding the initiative as he explained that uh, the initiative is targeting 50 centers on the level of uh, the Republic with um, 1,300 and 81 uh, villages targeted during this initiative. So that was uh, the top story for tonight. Come meeting of uh, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi with uh, Prime Minister Mustafa Mabouli and the Minister of Housing for the Decent Life Initiative. But as I said, as we are approaching the end, of a very difficult year. We are uh, today focusing, despite the coronavirus pandemic, the battle of the Egyptian state against the pandemic, not just in Egypt, for the uh, sake of Africa, for the sake of the Middle East, for the sake of uh, the Arab world and the world uh, in general, as we did see in the past uh, year or during the course of uh, 2020. Tonight, we will be focusing on the latest achievements uh, recognized by the world for Egypt in the field of higher education and the education in general. So let's see more about that in the upcoming report. Egypt has climbed nine places on the U.S. News 2020 Best Global Universities Rankings for the Quality of Education. The remarks were made by spokesman for the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research spokesperson Hossein Abdel Ghaffar on the global classification which ranks the top 80 countries for education in the world. Egypt has jumped from the 51st in 2019 to the 42nd in 2020. 
Abdel Ghaffar affirmed that Egypt is witnessing a great development in educational process in terms of developing curricula and building new universities. He explained that Egypt opened several new universities recently, noting that no country in the world can open four universities at the same time. The official added that Egypt used to open one university every 10 years, which was not enough to cover the local demand, stressing that Egypt is working now to meet the needs of increasing population. He pointed out that Egypt is aiming to develop the existing universities, in addition to creating new opportunities for students by opening international and technological ones. Welcome back. You're still watching the Daily Debate and the very special episode regarding the latest achievements of the Egyptian state in the field of higher education and education in 2020 despite the coronavirus pandemic under the tenure of President Assisi. And tonight I'm honored to be having with me in the studio Professor Hassan Addisoui, the Dean of the Faculty of Basic Science at El Galele University. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, speaking of um, the achievements made in 2020 in the field of uh, building new universities, renovating the old ones, um, having new infrastructure for the future in uh, terms of developing the higher education in Egypt, how do you see those achievements and the agenda of the political leadership under President Assisi in this field? Uh, I'll say good evening, uh, uh, everybody. And uh, first of all, I'll start actually. I'll say thank you very much for uh, the government cabinet and the lead of uh, President Sisi here, uh, because this year 2020 is actually challenging year, very yes. difficult year, and mm. our government, uh, the Egyptian government, actually mm. facing all these challenges and achieved part of the vision of. 2030 by actually establishing a number of universities. Mm. Uh, the most important of these universities, the national universities, or sometimes we call it non-profit universities, the four universities, uh, Galala University, King Salman University, and uh, El Alamein University, and new uh, Mansoura or uh, Al Mansoura Al Gidida University. Yes. Uh, <coughs> this already four universities started, mm -hmm. uh, I'll say three of them already opened and welcomed students this year. And inshallah next year, uh, the new Mansoura will be ready actually for welcome uh, students. 
Yes, uh, non-profit universities, national universities, uh, what is the difference between them and the state universities and the private universities here in Egypt? Uh, let's just start with the state university. The state mm. university is actually fully funded and sponsored by the government, right? The students actually don't pay any fee to this uh, university, state universities. Uh, uh, private universities is actually, this is a profit university. Mm. It's good to have actually the two types of universities, state universities and the private universities, because all of this will provide education to mm. all Egyptians and Egypt is a big country and we are now 100 actually million or over 100 and we need more it more universities yes and this is the private university is it's a profit university uh, the students actually will pay the full fee mm. to get actually knowledge or to get uh, some education for from this university yes national universities or non-profit universities actually the, the term or the definition of this is, yes. is very clear because mm. it's a non-profit university the students here it, they're not going actually to pay the full tuition fees like the private university, mm. right? Uh, or not to pay any fee like the state university. This is something in between, like a, a new model. It's fully supported by the university, by the uh, the government, under the lead of President Sisi. And uh, to be honest, yeah. I would like to thank also Professor uh, Khalid Abdelafar, yes. the Higher Education Minister, mm. who is actually taking this seriously, this actually type of university or this type of models here. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, of course, speaking of uh, the non-profit universities or the national universities, the importance of having this type of universities in Egypt for the students and for the uh, process of improving the higher education here in Egypt. How can they go both hand in hand in the future? As I mentioned earlier, we need this dif different type of actual universities because Egypt have a, a variety actually uh, between, I would say, the uh, all, all type of levels and this type of university will provide actually the service for all Egyptians. Uh -huh. So some of the Egyptians can afford the private universities, some of them can't afford, some of them can afford the national university or this mm -hmm. new model of universities, some of them they can't afford, then it's good actually to offer the Egyptians all this different uh, variety and the mm -hmm. parent can choose actually which type of, of university. So, so it could be cheaper than the private universities? It's a cheaper, mm. right? And in the same time, the, the students will get a, mm. a high quality education for this university. Mm -hmm. This university is built to be international university, mm. to be competitive universities, right? So that's why the, the Egyptian government focus on these universities. First of all, you can't open one of these universities unless you have some kind of collaboration mm. with international university. Mm. And all these universities already have uh, collaboration with international mm -hmm. universities uh, from US or from UK or from Europe. So this is, this is the mm -hmm. one, let's say, condition, very important condition. And the President is actually very concerned about this one. We have to have collaboration with international mm -hmm. universities. So there are other models that um, were being uh, grounded or being put in place on the ground in other countries that we followed. The same mm -hmm. success story here in Egypt. Uh, the, I think the national universities are very rare mm. in, in, in action. All over the world. All so over the world. It's right. like a new idea. Uh, it is. Some of, some of the actually countries in the Middle East have some mm. national universities, but uh, to be honest, we can't hear about them. We mm. didn't see the progress of these national universities. Mm. But, but all what we hear about the four national universities yes. launched this year, yes. actually it's a very, very good sounding. Mm. Right, uh, in Egypt or outside Egypt and everywhere. Yes, and, and to be having three different models is a success in itself here in Egypt for the, as you've mentioned, the parents, the students, and for the educational process itself. Yes, mm. yes, uh, uh, definitely yes, because if we go back, I will say 10 years or 20 years ago, we only have the state universities and mm. we don't have 
a private university at that time, we could be, yes. we could have something like few number of private universities yes. at that time. But look at the universities days. We have over 50 or around 60 universities now, and the plan mm. by 2030 to have over 100 university or probably 120 university. Mm. So by 2030, and this is part of the uh, government of uh, Egypt division mm -hmm. uh, 2030. Yes, as uh, a dean at the uh, at a faculty of Al Galala University, how do you see the importance of Al Galala University and the other models of the national universities in linking the labor market with higher education? This is a good uh, actually question they hear, mm -hmm. right? So <clears throat> this university actually is built to have a very good link with yes. the labor market mm -hmm. and industry because this is, we call it the smart universities. Mm -hmm. Smart universities to actually bridging the gap between university or higher education and industry. Mm -hmm. And this type of universities have a specific programs in this university which is going to achieve this part actually to actually help the students or the graduate or to, to be actually ready to go and work uh, straight after after the graduation yes right uh, I have many examples if <laughs> <laughs> I can mention all of this one but uh, yes this is definitely mm -hmm. this type of universities is actually yes uh, if you could give us a couple of examples Right, for example, mm. in uh, Galala University, uh, specifically faculty of uh, basics or advanced basic science, which um, uh, the dean of this faculty, we have three uh, specific programs here. Mm. Uh, the first program is called uh, nanoscience and technology. And the second program is molecular biotechnology. The third program is uh, uh, petroleum and mining uh, geology. Mm. These three actually programs, one of them, the nanotechnology, is the first time to have actually program under this title, mm. nanotechnology, uh, for the undergraduate student. Right. Uh, I can't actually uh, mention uh, Zewail University here because Zewail University have uh, nano uh, technology program, but this, uh, I think this one starts on the BOST study, not mm. the undergraduate study, but... After graduating. Uh, yes, yes, but on the Galala University, we started, we launched this program mm. for the undergraduate students. And uh, we know nanotechnology, one of the very important, actually, branches in, in education or in science. And when you have students or graduate from this uh, branch, he's, gone, he's definitely, he's going to compete uh, mm. globally and internationally. This graduate, we we're going to prepare this graduate to compete internationally. Mm -hmm. He can work everywhere. He can work in Egypt, and he can work outside Egypt. Uh, but we are actually working to, to help the student to uh, serve or mm. to actually uh, Egypt first, and yes. then it's up to the students. The student is going to be mm. qualified to go and work mm. outside. You field. need to give them outside a field. competition, a chance to be staying here or going abroad. This is the target of these national universities, mm. the non-profit universities. We, we actually focus uh, with the higher, actually, education ministry to have a graduate, also it's a competitive graduate. Mm. He's ready to work anywhere. on the second day of uh, graduation anywhere. Mm. That's why this university is, uh, is going to be international university. Mm -hmm. right? The accreditation of this university is going to be international accreditation, so the student can go and work outside without any uh, comparing you know, certificate with other certificates. Or, or at least we could be drawing investments because we have the manpower and we have the technology and we have the brains. Yes, yes. So we, we could be having investments here in the field, for example, nanotechnology. Yes, and mm -hmm. I think uh, the, the plan also of the of the higher uh, ministry uh, uh, is going to actually build a number of uh, center of excellence. Mm. Right? This center of excellence need uh, a graduate with this background right, in nanotechnology, which can help right, uh, for R&D or 
research and development yes. units within these centers for many applications such as aerospace, automotive, uh, and other commercial application. Mm. And uh, also electronics, is, there is huge application in electronics, nano devices, uh, and even in medicine, mm. nano medicines. Limitless and, options. Yeah, it's, uh, I think, yeah, the, the, the world now focuses on <laughs> the nano scale. If you understand everything mm. on the nano scale, right, that it's going to be easy to understand mm -hmm. or to actually mm -hmm. enlarge yes. uh, your learning about actually discovering other applications. Mm -hmm. And we have the potential because the Egyptian we, students, they go out of Egypt uh, to be studying somewhere else and working somewhere else in the same fields. All Egyptians are smart, mm. right? I am one of them, right? <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm a yes. smart, but you know, I have the chance, oh. uh, like everybody else, like, like me or colleagues, if he has the chance, and many of them, to go and work abroad, mm. he, he's, he's definitely he's going to succeed. Mm. Because he had the good background, he had the, the knowledge to work everywhere, right? We just uh, go there and work together with the mm. whatever, which group, uh, US or UK or Europe. Yes. Uh, and there is many Egy Egyptians, there is many figures mm. we know we yes. know of them. If we different say, fields. Different fields. Mm. If we know, if we name some of them, so Professor Ahmad Zouil, uh, Professor Farwell Baz, mm. um, and Professor Mustafa Sayed, so all in different, different fields. Yes. And all of them Egyptian. All of them graduated from the Egyptian universities. Mm. The yeah. state universities as well. The state universities. Yes. Speaking of uh, the new specializations that uh, we hear of, like nanotechnology, isn't really. Uh, new for the Egyptians, but there are new specializations that we hear for the first time. How would this interest the Egyptian students now, as you said that um, they already welcome the students at the beginning of the semester? We already have now a number of students on this program, uh, on the Faculty of uh, Advanced Basic Science, uh, and, and uh, this, this number of students is uh, they're still not the target. Mm. We're targeting actually more students in this field, and we and are actually now helping the students. We have in the Galala University Advisory uh, Center. This advisory advisory center actually helps the students, sit with the students, all the academics. So actually, what actually this nanotechnology program is going to provide for you. Mm. So how you can be uh, after four years when you graduated. Why you need this program? Mm. Right. We have also the molecular biotechnology program, which is one of the very important program. Yes. And there is a cross-linking between these two programs. Some of the students said, oh, I need to go the biotechnology one because I like the biology. Some mm. of them, no, I said, I need to go nanotechnology because I like uh, the physics. Mm. No, my advice to them, these actually two programs will, will help each other. And when you graduate it, from the, you will have background from both uh, programs and you can actually mm. work in any mm. different field. They need to look into the future as well, not just the present or what I like now. This is, this is the role of the academic uh, at the Galala University or uh, other universities uh, to actually help the students, to advise the students how is your future is going to be looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, speaking of um, Al Galala University, New Mansoura, Alamein, New Alamein University, uh, King Salman University as well uh, in Sinai, those uh, new universities, how could they be alleviating the pressure on the state universities uh, to be solving the problems of a lack of funding, a lack of scientific research? How can they solve those problems now? Uh, I know, I know the, the, the government actually uh, spending a lot of money to build this type of university, these four universities, and these four universities in a very specific area, right, of Egypt. Yes. Very close to the border of our Egypt, which needed a lot of development mm. uh, in, in this area. For example, uh, Galala University, it's uh, actually, it's a desert, right? When you actually have a university there, so you're starting the development of this area mm -hmm. by having this university, you have mm -hmm. the students there. So the whole community. All community will start by having the 
the university there. It, this is a good point and a good vision from the, the government mm. uh, to actually have this type of uh, universities in this area, right? Mm. Which is in the future, right? These universities have to find some funding, right? Mm. To continue research. Yes. And I think all the academic or the researcher or the professors who join this university are capable to apply for more funding and the higher uh, 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 education um, ministry already provide um, a lot of funding under STDF, all the academic know this one, so all these professors mm. are capable to bring this funded, which is actually going to help them actually establish new research area, new project there, and all the project or the research is definitely is going to help this area. For mm. example, the program we have, petroleum and mining geology. So we are very close for actually oil and gas uh, industry mm. and the Red Sea and this, uh, the students. Even it could be possible for them to be training. Yes, and they will. Easily training. Uh, yeah, very close. Yes. And we will actually har arrange uh, field trips mm. to all of this uh, area. Uh, so that's why we have this university there. Mm -hmm. So, if I want to add something here also yes. for the next year Mansoura University, the new Mansoura University will have also specific programs like uh, a school of textile. Mm. On, you know, so, we don't have mm. school of textiles here at the mm. state university or even the private universities. This is mm. going to be the... So, they also depend on the place that they are based in? Yes. Uh -huh. So, and uh, also there is... Uh, because this one is close to uh, uh, Demyatta, or, uh, so we'll have also art and design mm. over there. Art and design will will support this type of industry mm. because this and area for the furniture as well and the furniture, one mm. of them. So yeah, that's why uh, Al Amin University will have uh, a different uh, specific programs mm. uh, to be suitable with the with the area over there. So yes. Uh, I think every university of this have a reason why this university built on this area over there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, speaking of um, the vision of President Abdel Fattah Hassisi, of the political leadership of uh, the Minister of Higher Education, Dr. Khaled Abdel Ghaffar, um, those visions in having those national universities in different places serving different purposes at the same time. In your opinion, what are the challenges that face them in different governorates as well? Uh, yes, uh, I, I think um, probably I mentioned this one, this is a very challenging, right? And the, uh, the government and the cabinet now, uh, led by uh, Dr. Uh, Mustafa Madbouli and the, the higher education led by uh, Dr. Uh, Khaled Abdul Ghaffar, they have a vision why they have why they're spending all of this money or they're spending this funding for this university there. Mm. So, and we could say there is a risk, actually, funding this one, mm. but this actually is going to put a lot of uh, effort on the academic or on the I would say the university's leadership seniors there mm. to see how we can continue uh, bring the funding and establish this because the government is uh, they're not going to actually keep uh, funding this type of universities yes. for the life mm. now the thanks for the government thanks for the uh, president uh, of the uh, this is one of the national actually project they give us the funding the funding they build the universities and it's up to us now mm. but we have to work it's hard. like an investment yeah this for the future yeah this we have now to work hard right to make this project or make it happen to make this project progress mm. and for the near for, for the future and for our new generation mm -hmm. um, speaking of the state universities does this mean that they can't compete now with the national universities with the private universities um, does this mean that they don't offer the same quality of higher education now no uh, the state universities is actually, I will say, the, our mother universities here. Right? Yes. We all graduated from our state universities, right? Yes. There is, we're not competing 
we are working here in for Egypt, mm. right, under the same umbrella, which is the higher education ministry. And even there is a collaboration between the national university and the state universities. Mm -hmm. National universities, they are new universities and the different needs of board. Mm -hmm. They want experience. With, with, from mm -hmm. the state universities. Mm -hmm. So, but there is programs which is not available in the state universities. Yes. And that's why we have the national universities providing these uh, specific programs and providing also new research area on these universities. Mm -hmm. So the national universities actually extension to mm. the state universities we're not we're not competing mm. you know, right so all of this we work together definitely mm. right and there's a good point here i need to actually uh, mention yes uh, mm. also uh, president cc uh, uh, launched uh, another 10 universities 10 national universities mm -hmm. belong to the state university every state university have uh, a land right nearby to the university uh, they now can actually build a national university mm -hmm. belonging to the state university what, with the same name with the same name mm. almost the same name for for example uh, Mansoura University they have mm. Mansoura uh, National New Mansoura yes. no the national that, that's university. a whole new one it's a different one yes right so New Mansoura is one of the four universities we already mm. launched this year. So another one could be built. Another one is going to be built. Yes. That's the agreement. Okay, this mm. approved now. In but different governorates as well? In ten different governorates? Ten, yes. It's one, one of mm. ten. Mm. Right. So, for example, Ain Shams University has a uh, university there. Uh, and also there is university on the south of Egypt as well. Mm. Because we're not only focus on the on the north, no, the there's other yes. university, oh. national university everywhere. So I think by uh, very soon we will have 15 national universities. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, of course, include the four universities now, and the 10 of them belong to the state university, which is going to help the state universities mm. and to help the staff in the state universities. It's a, it's an extension or mm. kind of extension to these universities. Students can go there. Uh, visit these new universities, new labs, new program, new so, so that's that's the good vision also, right? Mm. We're not leaving the state universities. By the times, mm. the state universities will be developed, mm. right, to be like the national universities in in the future. Yes. So, uh, what is still needed for the higher education in Egypt here to be flourishing more and more in 2021? Um, I think <laughs> uh, higher education need a lot of support from the yes. government. Yeah, thanks for the government already actually give the support. Uh, but uh, as you know, higher education in every country mm. uh, always need a lot of support because every country, uh, if you need this country to to be advanced country, you need actually to spend more mm. on the higher education and also the pre-higher edu education yes because we can't ignore the education, education in general yes. education in yeah. general and i have to i have also to thank us uh, dr uh, tara shawi mm. the uh, pre education minister yes he's actually doing a lot of achievement and the progress for the pre education uh, mm. the minister of education yes. uh, mm. for the pre education which is actually helping the higher education mm. they complement each other yes so, yes, def de definitely we need, <laughs> we need more, you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we will be continuing the um, discussion over the future of higher education and education in general and what we have achieved here in Egypt in 2020 despite the battle against the coronavirus pandemic after this report as we will be having more information on the same topic. So, stay tuned. Non-profit private universities are a new generation of Egyptian universities. King Salman International University in Sinai, Alamein International University in New Alamein, Galala University in Galala and New Mansoura University in New Mansoura are the first four of the new educational projects that the Egyptian government set into motion two years ago. 
Two of these, the KSIU and Galala University, have opened their doors to students in October 2020. Earlier this year, President Afat Hassisi praised the non-profit university's project during an inauguration ceremony of several development projects in New Alamein overlooking Mediterranean west of Alexandria. The Ministry of Higher Education said in a statement that the non-profit universities aim to compete globally in the realm of science and technology and in culture by providing high-quality education that promotes innovation and forms a generation capable of becoming regional and global pioneers while preserving the Egyptian identity and strengthening bonds with Arab and African countries. A central aim of these non-profit universities is to forge a direct link between higher education and the labor market through flexible curricula that can accommodate the needs of the labor market. The ministry said that a study has already been conducted on Egypt's development needs in diverse sectors. The non-profit universities will operate in accordance with the same law that applies to other private universities. In 1996, Parliament passed a bill presented by the Egyptian government at the time, permitting the establishment of private and non-profit colleges and universities under the supervision of the Supreme Council for private and non-profit universities. Educational experts believe that the greatest educational challenge in the world is to develop the skills suited to today's world. One of the main features of that world can be summed up in the fact that the five largest economic entities in the world are all high-tech companies that offer electronic services. They say that global studies predict that the world will see the emergence of 70,000 new job titles by 2030, most involving specializations that are not currently taught in existing academic institutions. Welcome back. Still uh, continuing the discussion with uh, Professor Hassan al the Dean of the Faculty of Basic Science at uh, Al Galala University. Uh, Professor Hassan al is speaking of uh, the students who want to be enrolled at the beginning of uh, next year or the beginning of the new semester. How can this be done for them? Uh, <clears throat> this is a good actually uh, question as well because yes. uh, some of the parents are still confused how the students can join this uh, type of universities. Mm. Uh, so the university have a specific system uh, which is, is not depending on the, the score of the final uh, uh, de de degree or the, mm. the, the that we call it the higher, ed higher yes. what do you call it, higher education mm. or uh, high school. High school, yes. Right? No, it's, it's not depending on this one. The admission at the national universities, uh, have, it's, it's a point system, mm -hmm. point system. Uh, for example, if you actually, one of the students, you get the 100% of, from uh, the uh, higher education, pre-higher education, uh, and this will give him only 50% of the admission of the university, mm -hmm. because there is other exams, um, like uh, language exam and the critical thinking exam and also <coughs> scientific uh, subject exam like chemistry, physics and uh, biology exams, uh, students have to achieve uh, the other 50% uh, mm. or 50 points to actually join this type of universities. Uh, also the admission to this university is a bit lower compared to the state universities uh, um, I think the Dr. Khaled Abdullah Far he, he gave like a 5% uh, uh, lower to actually encourage this uh, students to join this uh, because it's a new, a new, new project, new experiment. We need to actually mm. to encourage our students to join this uh, type of uh, universities. Um, <coughs> yeah, yes, it's a different system mm. uh, from the state universities. Uh, which I will say this is exactly like the other system worldwide and, and even in US or in UK so it's not depending on your score and I will say in uh, 
Sanoyama, if you say. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's a new system, but um, it also offers new locations, especially for Al Galala University and uh, King Salman in South Sinai or in and around uh, South Sinai. How do you see the importance of the location of those two universities in specific? Uh, yes, it's a new area, right? And uh, if I talk about Galala University, Galala is uh, a very special area. Now, Galala, it's, uh, <coughs> it's on the mountain, if you say. It's oh. uh, well, hills. It's about, like, I think almost a thousand meters above the uh, sea level. Mm -hmm. Galala University, yes, uh, but it's uh, it's a very beautiful when you actually see this uh, uh, city build there mm -hmm. between all the mountain and this this view. But we need the attraction. We need the attraction. We need a, a living uh, style mm -hmm. over there. We need to uh, to build a community there. And the university is the core actually to build this community there, mm -hmm. which already started. We already started this dream this year. Mm -hmm. This is for Galala University, for the King Salman. King Salman, there are the three branches for King Salman. Yes. One in Sharm Sheikh, one in uh, Tour City, and the third one on uh, Ras Sebdr. And also, this uh, it's a very attractive area. Mm. Right. So, if we have. Mm. For tourism. For tourism, of mm. course. And uh, if we have this type of, of university there, so you. Because the target of this university is to bring students, of course, uh, internally from Egypt, everywhere, and uh, from. Uh, the region, when a region mm. Middle East, and from Africa, and actually from everywhere in the world. Mm. So, yes, it's it's a very mm. attractive tourism area. and education at the same time. Yes, mm. it's it's a both. Yeah, mm. and building a new community. Um, about the new graduates of those universities, in your opinion, what would be the potential characteristics of those graduates? These graduates, they are, they, I would say, they are special graduates, mm. <laughs> if you say, right? Because they are going to work hard, mm. these graduates. They have all the support from the academic, from the teachers, from lecturers, from professors there, mm. because this is the vision, this is the vision of, of this university, right? If we need to have a graduate actually in, for example, in, in art, right? So we have a school of art mm. uh, or faculty of art and design at Galala University, so which is going to is going to give all the students what he needs mm -hmm. in the future to be artist or to be designer. Right? Yes, and I have to mention something good as well here. So we have a school, for example, of uh, architecture, which is the first time to have a school of architecture or faculty of architecture separate from faculty of engineering. Mm. Here on our the state university, architecture is a part of the engineering mm. faculty. But on this Galala University, for example, we have a school of uh, or An faculty. entity in itself. Yes, of architecture. Mm. And this is why, this is because we know the importance of architectures. We need the architecture for these new areas, for Galala or mm. for uh, Sinai, because we're building new cities uh, over there. Uh, for example, I have to say in the King Salman we have uh, over the <coughs> faculty of uh, architecture, uh, agriculture, <laughs> agriculture, yes, which is focused on the desert, how to actually mm -hmm. develop the desert area, how to actually put uh, plants or in in uh, the desert area, and this is the first time to have a faculty of uh, architect agriculture, yes, the, in one of the universities, mm -hmm. as well as first time to have faculty of basic science or sciences mm. in national universities uh, for the first time, which is already started at Galala University. We are proud to have this one. Right. What are the major subjects of uh, this uh, faculty, basic science, or the advanced basic science? As I, as I mentioned, uh, we, we started with three programs here. Mm. Right. The three programs is nanotechnology, uh, program and the molecular biotechnology program and the petroleum and the mining uh, geology. And those are considered nowadays the basic science this for the future. Science. Yes, mm. this is actually based on the basic science, mm. right? So as you know, all these sciences, different uh, even medical science, engineering science, all of these different fields is actually based on the basic science, but belong to the basic science. Mm. We specifically have these three type of programs 
and we are looking for more. We can have a program in actually the water ground, grounded water, for mm -hmm. example. As you know, water is one of the uh, very important uh, topic. Yes. Uh, the Egypt focus on this one, mm. and we could we will work to have a specific program on this one uh, and other programs as well. So, but we already started by this three programs this year. Mm -hmm. Yes. On the other hand, more than a jump of 160% in terms of the budget that uh, Egypt has allocated for 2020, 2021 for higher education and education in general from um, 25 billion uh, dollars to 65 billion uh, in, to, uh, in 2015, in 2021 in comparison. So about 40 billion, uh, I think, pounds, not in dollars, but I think in pounds, that's a huge number as well. It is, it is very huge, you know, within the last five years to have this actually, uh, I'll say this jump. Yes. Right? And if, if, I, if I say something here, I say uh, this is our actually government, mm. right, <coughs> led by President Sisi, they focused on right, the education now because before education was actually <laughs> Uh, missing, right? But now you see now is one uh, one one hundred sixty percent. Uh, yes, a jump of one hundred sixty percent between right. twenty fifteen and twenty twenty one. Yeah, with, within six five, years. Six years, right? Which is a huge actually. Mm. But as we said, all the scientists, all the academics, we are looking for more, mm. right? Uh, we are looking for more, not for us, but no, this is for our beloved country. Yes, and right. we have jumped about nine places in uh, the U.S. ranking of the Egyptian universities, the importance of uh, such a jump in such a short time. Uh, do you mean by the, the ranking? Yes. Right. <coughs> ranking now, uh, if also I go back, right, I would say 10 years ago, we, did, we don't know about the ranking, university ranking at all, right? But these days, or nowadays, so ranking is everywhere, even the students. Mm would before they actually going to join one of the universities, they can go online and they check. So what is the rank of this university belong to other universities, mm. right? So ranking is very important. Why is very important now? <coughs> because we, I mentioned we are working to have a graduate or international graduate. International graduate means he can go and work everywhere, mm. right? If you graduated from a ranked university, right? So it means you can go and work everywhere because when you go and work somewhere, so the first thing you actually provide your CV. So actually the employer will look at where you are graduated from. Yes. Right, if you are gradu mm. graduated from, uh, if I talk about Egypt, we have Cairo University, we have Mansoura University, we have Enchamps University, we have Alexander University, we have Asyut University. We have a number of universities, I think about 14 universities here. Mm. They already rank it and they're on the top universities. Uh, I can't mention all of them, so, <laughs> but uh, we have a good number and the rest of universities working hard mm. to actually join these universities. Right? Comparing internationally or globally, right? Uh, yes, all these universities well known there, outside Egypt, you know, uh, and hopefully, and we have to do all these national universities, like Galala University, King Salman or Al Amin, mm. Mansoura, uh, Al Gadida or New Mansoura. Uh, we we're working on this one from day one, mm. from day one, to have this university on the rank, and we already started because mm. we, when we publish paper or scientific paper <coughs> because we are belong yes. for example, to this university we have to mention this university on the paper mm. and once you mentioned on your publication this record will go actually globally and internationally and they will go on a website called Scobus so it means this is the first record mm. right, to be ranked to be ranked this year or next year so once, mm. once we are ready so we have all the database yes. fees for the ranking. But we took uh, the first step. Uh, Professor Hassan al the Dean of the Faculty of 
basic science at the Al Galali University. Thank you very much for being with us tonight on uh, the daily debate and a happy new year. Thank you very much, and uh, it's a pleasure mm -hmm. uh, to be with you today, Mr. Ahmed. And, pleasure uh, is on and thank you very much, and uh, I will say happy new year for all Egyptians, mm -hmm. yes. and uh, hope 2021 to be good <laughs> yes. uh, and clear from any from COVID and any other crisis. Yes, thank you very much thank once very again. Much. Thank you. And uh, this brings us to the end of uh, the daily debate for tonight. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.